going on guys today we are back and today we are talking about wiring the 1UZ swap in my 1989 Toyota Pickup. Brought to you in part by Overland Outfitters. Now what I'm going to discuss in this video applies to a whole heap of Toyota swaps including 3.4 swaps, 2RZ, 3RZ swaps, 1UZ swaps and even 2UZ swaps. Now, I'm not going to tell you exactly what wire goes where and stuff like that, but I'll give you basic guidelines on how to wire these swaps so that you can decide whether or not you want to tackle this yourself. So I'm going to start this video by showing you exactly what the wiring looks like in my truck inside the cab just to get it running for the time being. And yeah, that is quite the mess, but let me assure you, that was only temporary. A lot of those connections in there were either just twist tied together, or some of them were soldered in place. And reason being, is I wanted to get this thing running and driving and put a few kilometers on it to be absolutely sure that I'm confident that the wiring is all good and this thing isn't going to leave me stranded. And so far, I've got about 50 kilometers on this swap and things seem to be running great. So now, I've picked up a few random plugs from the auto parts store and I'm going to use these to turn all those temporary connections into permanent connections that I can then loom and hide up under the dash and it'll look pretty and it'll be reliable for a long time. So yeah, that's the plan for today. I'm gonna get all the wiring buttoned up, hide it up in the dash, make it look nice and pretty, and then I'll go over what I did with you guys and explain what you need to do to get your own engine swap running. Now I'll admit, it isn't the prettiest thing ever, but it looks a lot better than all the hanging wires and junk. It's all, everything's got plugs so that I can disconnect it all if I ever had to pull the engine, nothing is like hardwired into place. Now this setup, I do have the computer tucked up here in the dash. Reason being is this computer is so much bigger than the factory and there is not a chance it's gonna fit inside the kick panel down here. Problem with it being up there though, is uh, the glove box is gonna be nowhere near close to fitting. So what I did next is I trimmed the back of the glove box trim piece and this will fit in here. Um, next up, trim the back of the glove box itself, get rid of the actual cubby portion and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna have to live without having a glove box and that's it. And done. Okay, now let's get into the technical stuff. How do you wire your own swab? First off, this is not necessarily an exact how-to video. The information I'm about to share should be used as general guidelines. I am no mechanic, nor am I an auto electrician or anything that would even slightly make me qualified to show you how to wire an engine swap. But I am a long-term computer and electronics nerd, and most importantly, a YouTuber. Therefore, I am distributing this information on the internet where it is absolutely the truth and nothing could be wrong. Um, on second thought, maybe if you're gonna wire your own engine swap, please proceed at your own risk. In all seriousness though, I have wired several Toyota engine swaps. My original Supercharged 3.4 swap, Ryan's 3RZ swap, Boy Boy's 3.4 swap, Corey's 2RZ swap, my 2UZ swap that immediately caught into flames, not related to wiring, my 1UZ swap that shortly after skipped timing and bent intake valves that is definitely has nothing to do with wiring, and lastly, my current 1UZ swap that runs and drives absolutely fantastic with no issues. And in my experience, I can tell you that all of these engines are a lot easier to wire than you would think. You essentially give power to the ECM and power to all the sensors that need it to run and boom, you're done. Just kidding, we're not done yet. Now it's time to get into the basics of how to get your engine started. There is a surprisingly small amount of wires required to actually get your engine running. 
On most Toyota ECMs, there's about four plugs, three of which go directly into your engine harness and you will not touch a single wire in those. The fourth, however, plugs into the body harness of the vehicle your engine came from. This is the one that you have to modify. And to get a better look at this, I'm gonna reference some diagrams here. So for example, let's start off with the easiest engine wiring I've ever done, and that is for the 2RZ. This engine, if I remember correctly, only took four wires to get running. The first of which you could see right here, the battery. So this VATT, that is a 12 volt constant. This will always have power whether your key is turned on or off. Next up is directly below it, this B+. The B plus means that it's an ignition switch wire. So when your key is turned into the on position or in the cranking position, this here has power. And these two are the only wires that are going to the ECM that you actually need to touch in order to start the truck. So now you're probably thinking, great, I know there's two wires in the ECM that need to be touched, but how do I find them? How do I identify them? So if you look at each and every single one of these wires as they're going into the ECM, they all have their own letter that is identifying the exact plug they belong to. So if you look at both these wires that I've identified, they both belong to the A plug, both pin two and pin 12. Now, if you go to the very, very back of your diagram, we look for the A plug right there, pin two and pin 12 right there. So you know those are the two wires that you need to tie into. Okay, so now that your ECM has power and it turns on when the key is switched, we need to figure out what other electronics need power. Generally speaking, you need to give the injectors power, your igniters and your coils power, your throttle position sensor, idle air control valve, and mass airflow. Now finding the source of these powers is pretty straightforward. So you see the injectors here. You follow the wire up, back, over to the other page, over and down, and you can see it is on an ignition switch circuit. So you know that the injectors get a switched power through this plug right here, this 1K2. And if you look closely, you'll see that this black and red wire in the 1K2 plug doesn't just power your injectors. It goes forward and it also powers your ignition coils and igniters right here. So that circuit, once those have switched power, is done. Moving down here to the idle air control valve and the VSV valve, you see this power source, which is a white and red wire coming down to here. Honestly, I don't know why I circled throttle position sensor or vapor pressure sensor. Those both take power directly from the ECM, so ignore these. But you can see here the idle air control valve shares power with the data link connector, your, your oxygen sensors, and then moves forward and then gives power to your mass airflow and so on. And following this white and red wire down that powered all these various sensors, you will see that it comes up to a plug labeled 1K2, meaning in the exact same plug that you see this black and red wire powering your injectors and coils, you will also see a white and red wire powering all of your sensors. Now, when I used to actually distribute all of these power sources that I mentioned earlier, is I added an extra fuse box to my engine bay right here. This fuse box is entirely responsible for giving power to the injectors, the igniters, the coils, and so on. As you can see, I use three of the fuse box and I have four relays installed. So yeah, pretty much everything that requires switch power is given power by these relays. The ECM main bat wire also comes through this fuse box and it has its own fuse, but it does not have a relay. Now, moving in the Corey's truck, this is the one that actually has the 2RZ swap. This right here is that 1K2 body plug that I was talking about. And you can see right there, that's the white wire with the red tracer that gave power to all your sensors and junk. And on the back side right there, there is a black wire with a red tracer that gave power to the coils and the injectors. And you can see both of those are given power here. And as you can see right here, Corey picked up the exact same fuse box that I'm using in my truck. And these are the four wires. That's all that was required to get this 2RZ running in this truck. Now, obviously I chose to show you guys the 2RZ because it is the absolute best case scenario, the easiest one to wire that I have found so far. But pretty much everything else follows those exact same guidelines, except there might be a couple extra wires that you need to tap into. For example, this is my 1UZ engine wiring diagram. As you can see, this is the B+, just like the 2RZ had, but it also has an extra B+, right there. This also needs switch power. 
And not only that, it has an IGSW, an ignition switch power also. So all three of those wires all had to have ignition switch. Other than that, everything else was pretty similar. And not only that, but if you're using a Toyota wiring diagram like I am, in the very back, they give you a bit of a cheat sheet, which is really nice. So that you can go, oh look, that needs 12 volts constant. IGSW is 12 volts of ignition switch, B plus, whatever, and so on and so forth. Easy. So yeah, with this cheat sheet, it's pretty hard to screw up. You just go through the list, make sure everything is power, as this says it should have power, and the thing should start. Another major difference between that Tour Z and most other engine swaps is there's normally more than one body plug. Usually it's around two, but sometimes you'll find even more. Stuff like your tack, your oil pressure, or your water temperature, that's all sent through that same body plug also, and I'll be sure to touch on those in a future episode. But in this video, I just wanted to talk about the basics and what you actually need to get the engine started. Anyways guys, that about wraps up this week's episode of Dirt Garage, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll link those fuse boxes that me and Corey used in the description below. They're just off Amazon, they're super easy to use and install, and I do recommend them if you're going to be doing an engine swap yourself. Anyways, I hope this video helped you guys, or at least helped you decide on whether you want to tackle the wiring yourself on your own engine swap. Anyways, we'll see you I'ma next week. People say I'm lucky, others say I'm...